Okay, welcome back. So let's dive into goodness of fit tests a little bit deeper here. All right, so with the the first example we looked at, kind of explaining this idea, we were we were coming from this angle. We were thinking, all right, we've got a bunch of groups. We want to see are all of their proportions equal. Okay, and that's that's one way to do it. And essentially, what that is is proposing a uniform distribution for the data right equality across the board all right but we can also what if instead of equality what if we have specific values for each group's proportion that we're interested in all right that's one way we can do it too we can say well i think the proportion in this group is equal to some number i think the proportion in this group is equal to another number and so forth all right you also can run a goodness of fit test to look at some sort of specific distribution, right? For any of these distributions that we've looked at, the normal is common. Lots of times we want to know does the data fit normality, uh, Poisson distribution, whatever distribution that you want to test, you can look at with a goodness of fit test. All right, now when we're talking about specific distributions, here's an important point to remember. Sometimes we may have some sort of parameters included in the hypothesis with that distribution, right? I might say, okay, this is normal distribution with a specific mean and standard deviation. Or I may just hypothesize that distribution in general and then estimate the parameters of that distribution from the data, okay? So this point here, with or without hypothesized parameters, can be important. All right, that's that's what that P in our degrees of freedom represents. All right, so the only way we, we treat these tests any differently, the mechanics look the same, but we'll calculate those expected counts differently based on the type of null that we have. Okay, so let's look at another example here. So say we've got some different types of plants that we're breeding, and there's, there's three potential genotypes, A, B, and C. And we propose that rather than all these genotypes being equal, we propose a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio here. All right, so we're breeding 90 plants, and here's what we actually observed. So the question is, does this data actually fit this 1 to 2 to 1 ratio? All right, so I would state my hypotheses like this. That the proportion, so 1 to 2 to 1 would dictate these proportions. 25% are genotype A, 50% genotype B, 25% genotype C. The alternative, on the other hand, is that it does not fit the proposed model. And we'll use an alpha of 0.05 as usual. All right, so let's assume we meet our conditions here. We really should probably check that. But in order to do that, we have to come up with these expected counts first. All right, so remember what our hypotheses were. We had 90 total. These were our hypotheses. 90 total. So I take that 90, or I take in 0.25, or a quarter of 90 is 22 and a half. Half of 90, 45. A quarter, 22 and a half. All right, all my expecteds are over 5. No real small ones. We're in good shape. Now notice your expecteds can be decimal. All right, we could never have an observed that's a decimal, right? but expected can be decimals. All right, so then using our formula, observed minus expected squared over expected, right? then summing all those up for each cell. So here's each cell's contribution, and we get our test statistic of 2.267. All right, so let's find our p-value. So again, we typically treat these goodness of fit tests as a right-tailed test. All right, degrees of freedom. Well, there were three groups. There was genotypes A, B, and C. All right, we didn't have to estimate any parameters. Three minus one leaves us with two degrees of freedom. So we're looking at our table here. So we, we were going with two degrees of freedom. Remember my test statistic, 2.67. Okay, so what that tells me here is that 
my p my test statistic falls somewhere here, right? Somewhere bigger than bigger than 0 0.1, right? Because my test statistic is here, right? Bigger than 0 0.1, less than 0 0.9. That doesn't help me a whole lot. This 0.9, I would probably just say bigger than 0.1. So I estimated my p-value to be something bigger than 0.1. If I want an exact one, I can use technology here. I can pop it into Excel. That's a good, quick, easy way of doing it. Or if you want to graph it, there we go. That's what we're looking at. So pretty big p-value. All right, so what does that mean? We didn't find a significant p-value here. It's a non-significant p-value. So we fail to reject the null. That tells us Right, that our data supports that model. That model is a, a good model or it fits our data. Okay, so that's an empirical, that's running a goodness of fit test for some sort of empirical distribution. Right? What if it's one of these other special distributions that we know about? This example, let's deal with the Poisson. All right, so say we're dealing with defects on a circuit board that we're manufacturing. We want to we want to hypothesize that it comes from a Poisson distribution. Does the data support that? Right, you're so here we're just saying so the first thing we have to notice in general we're just saying a Poisson distribution. It doesn't say with a Poisson distribution of lambda equal to some number. Right, it's leaving that up to us. Poisson and what is lambda? So we're going to have to use our data to estimate the parameter of this Poisson distribution. All right, so here's our data. We're going to have to estimate lambda. All right. So our null is going to be that it follows a Poisson, our alternative that it does not follow a Poisson, just alpha 0.05. So when coming up with this Poisson distribution, here are the things that I need to take in mind. All right, I'm going to use, I'm just going to find the expected value of my data to estimate that lambda. Okay, so my number of defects, I have my observed counts here, and the proportion. So I'm going to use those proportions times a defect to come up with an expected value of 0.75. So let's try lambda of 0.75. All right, so using that lambda of 0.75, I plug in and come up with, the, with these Poisson probabilities. Now remember the Poisson distribution, x is unbounded on top. It's just something greater than or equal to 0. All right, so we only observe values of 0, 1, 2, and 3 defects, but the Poisson could go 3 or more. All right, so here's the Poisson probabilities. I take each one of these, multiply by 60, right, because we have 60 total in this sample and come up with these expecteds. So my expected zero count looks pretty good. One count looks good. Two count looks good. But three count, all right, that doesn't meet our conditions. That's below five. So I can still check Poisson, but using what I know about the Poisson distribution, here's maybe the Poisson I would want to use to check. I'm combining two, I'm combining these categories into just two plus so that my expecteds work out. All right, so I'm, I'm using what I know about the Poisson and I'm kind of playing around with things here in order to meet my conditions to do a valid test. All right, so this is the hypothesized Poisson we're going to use. Lambda equal to 0 0.75. All right, so let's calculate our test statistic. We made our conditions now. So my observed is here. These are the expecteds that I came up with on the last slide. All right, each cell's contribution and our test statistic, 2.96. So here's what we're looking for in a p-value. Remember, we always treat these as right-tailed. Now here's where it gets interesting, our degrees of freedom. All right, so K here, there were, we adjusted things into three groups, right? We went 0, 1, and 2 plus. So k is 3. Here's something we haven't seen before. Our number of estimated parameters, remember we estimated lambda with the data, so p here is 1, right? So 3 minus 
1 minus 1 leaves us with only one degree of freedom. So I'm going to go to my table with 2.96 and one degree of freedom. So one degree of freedom, 2.96 would fall somewhere in here. Okay, so that's telling, my, telling me my p-value is somewhere between 0.1 and 0.05. So we've estimated our p-value. What if we need an exact one? Excel or graphing it works well there. So we estimated it to be between 0.1 and 0.05. It's actually almost 0 0.09, 0 0.085. So what's our conclusion? Now we used alpha of 0.05, so again we failed to reject. If we fail to reject, it does appear that we can use the Poisson here. Now we had to do a lot of playing around to get it to fit that Poisson. Okay, and our p-value was pretty small, even though we didn't reject. Okay, so so maybe take results like this with a grain of salt, but it seems like Poisson will be good enough for now. All right, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.